our RV has leaks. Yep. Up there. On the roof. Yep. Meow. Tiny House Prepper. Hi there everybody, I'm Bill. And I'm Elizabeth with Tiny House Prepper. Today in this video we are going to review our brand new RV Armor roof. You know it has been said um, that there are two kinds of RVs. Those that the roof leaks and those that the roof doesn't leak yet. And I think there's some real truth to that. And we've got the first kind. <laughs> right. Yeah. When we bought this place, I'm sure if you've watched many of our videos, you know the story. This was an old dilapidated thing. This bump out behind us, the whole thing was completely rotten because there was a leak right up there. And I had to completely gut that thing and, and rebuild the whole bump out, slide out with where our, our chairs go here. But even after I did that, I couldn't stop the leak. I finally found a rubberized uh, roofing paint for RVs mm -hmm. that was supposed to, two coats, and it was supposed to be good for five years. So I put two coats on and it was still leaking up there. So I put a third coat on and it finally stopped the leak. That was about a year and a half ago. And now it started leaking again. And it seems like no matter what we do, we can't stop the leaks. And they, they just show up on the edges of things. Um, we'll show you a spot, you know, right above our front door where it just has started leaking again. It's discoloring the paint. You can see right up in here, um, it just has discolored as it's been leaking. Um, also, Bill hasn't really felt like he could finish this molding all around this door in the front door here um, because it would just be damaged by the, by the water as it seeped in. So um, it's going to be a relief to be able to really get this done and have it stay nice. That was fresh paint when we moved in. Yep. Yeah. And over the past year and a half, you can see it's not leaking like dripping, but Just it's it's leaking. Leaks. It was leaking enough. Seeping kind of like. Seeping yeah. to damage the paint. Yep. So that's just one example of some of the places where we've been noticing that obviously the roof is still doing some leaking. Right. So <clears throat> we had to come up with a solution. So right. You can't finish the inside completely if it's going to keep leaking. It's right. just not right. working. So my the most obvious solution to me was just put a new metal roof on it. I was going to build you know, a peak like this with two by fours and put a metal roof on it. And insulation. And which insulation. Is wonderful. Yep. But we took it to, to the uh, <clears throat> building inspector and he wouldn't allow it. He said that uh, the two by two walls wouldn't support it. And first of all, I don't agree with him, but second, he doesn't know that I had already gone all the way around and furred it out with additional 2x2, two two, so it's actually 2x4 wall. It would have held it fine. But the main thing to me is that this is an RV. It's not, um, it doesn't come under housing building codes for houses, but he thinks it does. Well, yeah, he's... But in order for us to prove that, we'd probably have to go to court to prove that his zoning or his building codes don't apply to an RV. But you know, I don't even want to go there. Well, and you know, you know, so we started looking at another option. One of the things that um, had baffled me a little bit about his decision that it couldn't handle it was that we've seen this place when it had like three feet of snow on the roof and it handled it just fine. And I just don't see that the addition of a little bit of roofing material, especially a light metal, would have been that much more stress on the walls. Mm -hmm. You know, anyway. So we had to look at other options and what the inspector suggested was that we built, build a freestanding pole barn type um, carport over top of it and it would have to have posts down on both sides all the way around to and support it. Big deep piers. That but the thing the is, yeah, you can't just build that. It, the codes would have required piers 42 inches deep and at least two feet wide at the bottom, which is absurd which means I'd have to get a backhoe in here to dig all of those and then all of the concrete and everything. It was just mind-blowing. And I didn't actually price it out, but it would have been thousands of dollars to right. do that. By the time we got all the permits, we actually did all of the, the, the um, digging and bought, bought everything, even if you did all the work yourself. We were talking thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Right. So that just wasn't an option. Also, I didn't. I wouldn't like the looks of that. To me, yeah. it's just kind of makeshift, you know. It's, it looks like we have a little RV parked underneath a a carport. Yeah, it's I just, weird. I just didn't like the looks of that at all. 
So we looked elsewhere. So, you know, we started seeing these ads for these aluminum, freestanding aluminum um, carports that, you know, the company comes in and just erects them for you. And you don't have to do piers because they are self, they, they stand on their own foundation. They're, they can just set them. You don't have to put them on big, big piers. Right, and then somehow they're screwed down to the ground or something. I don't know. But anyway, so we, we went up to a company that builds those and we told them what we wanted. We gave them the dimensions. We talked to them at the at the office there, and they gave us a price. You remember what that price was? Yes, yes, it was six thousand dollars. Six thousand dollars. Yes, it was six thousand. And still, it would have had that look that I don't like of a you know a trailer stuck underneath of a carport. I just yeah, trying to figure out how to insulate it and then make something come down to protect that area from weather. Yeah. And make it look sort of finished. One advantage would have been it would have had kind of an overhang, which could have been kind of nice for us. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, but yeah, it would be 6000 and then Bill would still have to kind of finish it um, to try to get, you know, uh, so that there's some kind of a, an edge connecting to the trailer somehow, right. you know. So we've just sort of been going along with this leaky roof and I was figuring, well, I'm going to have to scrape it and do a couple more coats of paint and good grief. I just did that last year. I don't want, am I going to have to do that every year? That's just not. Right, it's not and it's just not. It, it's you want to fix things up kind of nice inside, and then it leaks. And you know, we um, we have a cupboard in the kitchen we keep open all the time because we want to keep it dried out in there. So yeah. of course, the other the, the the last option would have been to just tear this down and replace it with another newer RV. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah. then that's really inexpensive. Of course, we've got the cost of the RV. And then the new building codes, now this has been here forever and it's sitting on blocks and it's grandfathered in, but the new building codes would require, even for an RV set here, that we do piers every 8 feet, 42 inches deep, and all of that. So she actually priced it out. We called the concrete company, found out how much concrete would cost. I found out all what of all that. of it would cost. And we figured that just to raise this, this old one and to do the piers and the footers for the new trailer, before we even talked about buying the trailer. or or yeah, before we talked about buying it, or yeah. transporting it, right? Depending on that would depend on how big the trailer was. Yeah, yeah, if it was this size, I could do it with a pickup. But if it was bigger, anyway. Yeah. What was the cost you came up with for that? Uh, that was, I would say, minimum of six. We're looking at maybe as much as eight thousand. Just to get this rid of this one and do the pier foundation to allow us to buy a new trailer to put on top of it. To, to bring in here and put on it, and you know, and, and and the permits and the, I mean, it all. Yeah. And we just. If you know us at all, you know we are debt free, and we're going to stay that way. Right. If we would go into debt, I wouldn't be able to retire. Right. And we don't. We don't want it. Um, there's no reason to do that. To have to go into into a lot of debt. Right. So what are we going to do? I just didn't know and, what we were going to do. And in the meantime, we have been just socking money away and saving and saving and saving. Because we're not in debt. Because, because we're, we're not, not paying a mortgage. That's we can right. Put, we can put the mortgage money or the rent money in the bank. Right. It just whenever we can, we've tried to save extra right. because we knew at some point some of these problems had to be solved. And one of the things I want to just talk about real quickly is that this has been really a stressful thing for Bill. Yeah. And I, I haven't you know, known how to fix it. <laughs> yeah. And it's just something that we can't really have a long term solution until we can stop the leaking. That's just really important to keep the place clean and not have mold start to develop and to try to keep up with all of it. It was just a constant headache for Bill. The thought of building the roof um, was uh, going to be very, very expensive and very complicated. And not only uh, that, but I would have had to take time off from work to do it, which would have cost us even more because there's it. lost income. You have lost income. Because that's not something I can just do in a day or a weekend. I right. do take by my by myself. It'd take me the better part of a week to completely finish the thing. So you know, there was still the possibility of having that thing just sort of stuck on top the the extra building we would have built, but even that still didn't have good solutions to, right. to everything. So yeah, it's um. You know, we just had not found a real good solution. And that, that paint stuff is supposed to work, and it just didn't. So, so <laughs> God is good. A couple of weeks ago, we went down to the RV show in Hershey. Yes, we made a video about that. And we mentioned in that video that we heard about something called RV Armor. Yes. Which is a roof solution for RVs that is just, it sounded like our perfect solution. Yep. So we contracted for them to do it, and yeah, um, it's done. The uh, the um, you know flat roofs that you see all the time on school buildings and different stuff like that. They have this real thick rubberized coating mm -hmm. on them. Well, that's basically what we're talking about. Instead of being a rubberized paint, it's actual real rubber. 
and, but and they, they put it they, they put it down in a liquid form mm -hmm. and it turns into real rubber yep and it's done in fact most most of it half of it was done while we were in Aruba and I yeah. didn't even have to worry about it yeah so. the smell was a little bit strong yeah. when it was first getting done in fact we just went and spent the night in the in the semi one night just to kind of get away from the smell but um, it you know that has all dissipated so here is the RV armor roof after it is finished and as you can see you can't even tell it's there it's not this big gaudy carport kind of thing it just looks like a trailer and they actually came down right to where the siding starts and all of this is the rubber I'll show you the roof in a minute another thing is that we have wanted for a while to put new white vinyl siding on here that would match the shed it's going to look much better but I haven't wanted to do that until I finished the roof because I didn't know what I was going to do and if I put some kind of a peaked roof on it up there that way it would come out here and get rid of this rounded part and be squared off and I didn't know how to finish the top of the siding until the roof was done so now that the roof is done I'm going to be able to just add a little bit of aluminum fascia on here to cover that where the gutter is and then the siding can just slide right up underneath of the gutter the whole place will look so much better when we put new white final siding to match the shed now it's been raining for the last couple days and so we still have some water on the roof here but let me show you our new roof it is a very hard rubber and this stuff is bulletproof and you can see this is the top of the fire flue you can see where they completely covered around there the bottom and for the uh, all of the vents here they completely painted up around the sides so there's no way moisture is going to get in here and even way back here for the plumbing roof vent they can completely painted up around that and it's just like I said bulletproof and I'm very happy with it and it's got a lifetime guarantee I'll talk more about that in a minute but this is going to do the job I'm really sorry that I wasn't able to film this for you so you could actually see the process but uh, he came out three days yeah at least, at least three days yeah three days or four four I think four altogether three and then one day when we were in Aruba, Aruba. yeah mm -hmm. and he, of course he's always here during the day when I'm at work and then I was in Aruba so there's no way that I could film it right I mean he worked hard he was up there scraping and, and putting all those coats on and stuff but with my balance and everything being up on top of a ladder trying to hold the camera and not be in his way was just not really a pretty picture I'm afraid but I can, I can tell you he worked really hard yeah. up there <laughs> for a long time so I don't have that part on film you'll just have to take our word for it I know I wish we could have <laughs> I wish we could so that's the roof and yep. we're very happy with it and like yes. I said just a minute ago there is a lifetime guarantee on this what did yes. they say about that um, it's actually attached to the VIN number of, of this RV okay. and so it is a forever thing they will always always make sure and stand by their product that it is guaranteed not to leak um, and it is attached actually to this RV for forever yeah and what the, guy, um, the salesman at the RV show when we were talking to him what he said I remember he said once you we do your roof it's our roof and if it leaks we will come and fix it yeah that's neat and yeah, actually, actually, go ahead. They also gave us a little uh, patch kit so that like if a, if a branch falls on it and just puts a little tear in it then we can just go up and patch it with the patch kit. Yeah, yeah. you know if something real sharp and pointy like a branch, yeah. a part of a tree falls on it or something, but yeah they're going to back it up right. and uh, so it seemed very reputable. Yeah. Well, yep, I'm just thrilled to death. So we had been saving for this uh, for a long time and um, we found out at the RV show that we could get our roof done for it was actually four thousand one hundred sixty dollars but he took a hundred off because we were at the RV show right. so it'd be like four thousand sixty dollars so when we when I consider the other options that we were looking at and all the prices involved and all the physical work that I would have to do to get it done and the headaches as soon as I heard four thousand I thought 
sold. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, we, we just needed something that was really going to work. Yeah. So then when the nice guy was up there working on the roof, he came down very apologetically, and apparently at some point many, many years back, um, it's an old RV, someone had put a bunch of tar mm -hmm. up there, and then that tar sat there for a long time, and then it got covered with with coats with of paint and then a couple of coats of, of rubberized, rubberized paint that I used. I know when I was up there doing it I had to scrape a lot of the old stuff off before I could even paint it and I think part of the reason it was leaking was because I didn't scrape everything off and there were, it was cracking and it was a mess. Yeah. It was an absolute mess. So he came down and explained to me that, that in order for them to really be able to make sure there was not going to be any leaking they were going to have to take it down to the bare metal and then build it up from there. So they had to scrape the entire roof all the way down yeah. to the bare metal. Yeah. I, I don't know how many coats of old stuff were on there, including a coat of tar. Yeah, he worked really long yeah. and hard. Um, and then he said it, it was going to take three coats instead of two of the rubber, right? Uh, yeah, it's going to take more. Yeah. And he was very apologetic, apologetic because usually these things stay pristinely white. But he said that there might be a chance a little bit of, a, of it would eventually discolor because just there was that residue. Uh, of just the coloring of the tar, and of course, I don't care. You yeah. know, as long as it's completely waterproof, if and it gets you can't a, see it anyway. yeah, if it gets so. a tiny bit off color, I'm not worried about that. But he wanted me to know that they try to make it stay right. a real beautiful, clear color. And I said, well, unless you're on Google Earth, really coming in pretty close, I don't think anybody's going to see it. But he had to put a lot more work into it and a lot more of their product to get it done right. And a th yeah, a third coat of their rubber instead yeah. of just two. Anyway, so he had to add 1800 onto that. And um, so I talked to Bill about it, and I still felt like it could be a pretty good solution for us. And like I said, we'd been saving and saving and saving. So um, So the total cost was? It, it came to right around 5860 just some under 6000 um, If we had tried to build that roof with all the piers and everything, it... When you're building something, we've learned this a long time ago, and, and I say this a lot, you've got to realize everything's going to cost more and take longer than you thought. That's right. just the reality of it. We would have been spending at least that much if Bill had to build the roof. We would have been spending at least this much, plus the cost of kind of tying in that, that metal shed roof that we were going to order. There would have been the, the cost involved in actually tying that all into our trailer. Yeah. Um, so... For this money, they came, they got the job done, um, they guarantee it, and I'm so happy for Bill. It's I really done, am. Because like I said, half of it, yes. done, it was done while we were in Aruba. It's off my mind. I've been stressing over this for a couple years of how am I yeah. going to fix the roof when the building inspector won't let me fix it the way I want to fix it, and on and on, and I am just so relieved. Yeah, it's just like, oh my goodness, all of a sudden we have an answer. Someone came and took care of it for us, and it's like... Yeah. Ah, you know, so I'm, I'm thrilled. Just we can, whatever we do on the inside now can stay done, and we don't have to worry about this thing continuing to have leaks. Right. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I am sure that I'm going, yep. to, I'm going to hear comments about putting this much money into this old trailer isn't really wise because you'll never get your money back out of it again. Right. Well, right. that's not the point. No. Nope. That's not the issue. We are not doing this as an investment, as a financial investment for the future. You know, this old RV? No. 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 It is just simply a maintenance cost. Right. If you owned a house and the roof needed replacement, you wouldn't say, well, I'm not going to put the money into the roof because I'll never get the money back out again. Yeah. Because when you put the money into the roof to fix the roof, it just brings it back up to the value it should. It's not an additional investment. Right. So it's just maintenance, and we are planning to live here. Yeah, this is our home. This is our forever home. So it really doesn't matter what it costs, I mean, um, what it's valued at, because, you know, like I always say, you can't eat equity. You know, you can't, right. you can't use the equity in your home, whatever it is, to put food on the table. You can't eat that. So right. if we're going to live here until the day we die, what good is the equity going to do us, and no matter how big or how small it is? So getting our money back out of it, that's for our kids to worry about, <laughs> not well, for us. The, well, it's true. It's true. The point is, um, we had to have a roof that wasn't leaking. Right. And um, it's wonderful to be in a position to save for so long. We did. We saved a long time, but now the job is done. Right. And um, so, yeah, I, if we're going to live here, we need to take care of it. And we're not in debt with it. We did not go into debt to do the roof. 
and it's just been a wonderful solution and I'm thankful and grateful we had the wherewithal to be able to do it. Um, this is not, we're not um, doing this for the company, we're not on their, yeah, what do you call those things? Um, we're not an affiliate, affiliate. they don't even have an affiliate program, no. we're not in, endorsing them and we're not getting paid for this, we're just telling you we found a product that works for us and we're happy with it so we're, yeah. we're doing a review of our experience with yeah. RV Armor. Compass. We just we just wanted to let you know because yeah. it's just part of, of us having this tiny little place here um, and the fact that it's an RV that's been fixed up means that the roof needed attention and for anybody out there that's going crazy with their RV roof we just wanted to let you know our experience. Yes, it did cost a chunk of money but it's a relief that it's done and it seems to have been done well. Yeah. And when we look so, at all the other options that we mentioned earlier, all of them cost about the same or more yeah. and if we just decided it wasn't worth it because we don't want to put that money in this old trailer so we got rid of it. We'd either be buying a new trailer, which would cost us a lot, or we would be buying a house, or we would be renting a house. Where you know, in this area, that's like a thousand dollars a month. Well, this will pay for itself in six months of rent that we don't have to pay. Yeah. And then it's done. It's paid for. Right. So we are very, very happy with. Yeah. It. And like I said, we didn't go into debt for it anyway. We're in yeah. a position that we can save for a while to be able to deal with what we need. Yeah. That is one of the things that's wonderful about being coming into a place in your life where you're debt-free. Yeah. And I want to encourage anybody um, that as you work toward that, keep in mind the goal of one way or another always socking a little bit of money away. And that way you can take care of the things that you need to take care of and without it being a huge burden. Yeah, we were able to just write a check for this because yeah. we've been saving our mortgage payments that we're not making. Well, basically, yeah. 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 This is all kind of come about slowly, but yes, we, we don't have to make those payments and so as we've gotten more on our feet, we can save money right. towards stuff like this. Right. So, but the main thing is, we live in a tiny house, and this is how we fixed our roof. Yep. So. So I'll put a link down below for the RV Armor uh, yeah. company if you're interested in looking at it. It is a nationwide company, and they yes. have they have technicians all over the country that will come out to your to your place and actually do it for you. There were several other companies down in the RV show that did similar things, but you had to go to their shop. And when they found out that we, <laughs> yeah, in fact, the one we talked to, when he found out that we were set permanently here and we couldn't move it, he said, oh, you need to go to talk to RV Armor because they'll come to your place. Yes. And that's yeah. exactly what they did. They did. The yeah. guy was great. He came right here and took care of it. So, yeah. Yeah, no, this, this poor, this, no, this old RV isn't going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Not in one piece anyway. All right. Good. Okay. So that's All it. Right. That's our new roof. Yes. RV Armor. And He's so happy. I am so happy. I am so <laughs> stress relieved. Yes, he is really relieved by that. So, And I'm relieved that I can put a little bit of paint up in some of these places and it's going to yeah, stay now nice. Now we can go paint it and finish the interior work that we were holding off. Now I can finish the uh, the exterior siding I mentioned. And, yes. You know, so we can get on with it now. Yep. So That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Thank you, RV Armor yeah. people. So, all right. So thanks very much for watching. And uh, if you found this informative, please like the video down below. And of it course, helps. if you haven't yet, you need to subscribe. There's oh, also yeah. so a button for that. <laughs> Get so, you down there somewhere. Somewhere, there. somewhere here. <laughs> okay. Okay, everybody. Right. Thank you. Love you guys. Talk to you okay. next time. Yep. Okay. Bye-bye.